This is ODAT Chat, your instant connection to recovery and community, one day at a time. This podcast may contain strong language, sexual content, and spiritual truth. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of the ODAT Chat Podcast. In case you're new here, my name is Arlena and I'll be your host. This is a podcast where my guests share their stories of alcoholism and addiction and their journey to recovery. So I have a very serious and important question for you. Have you worked the steps? Would you like to work the steps? What if I said you could work the steps with me on the show anonymously? I'm looking for a few brave souls who are willing to volunteer so that others may benefit from your example. If you're interested, just shoot me an email saying I'm in to podcastvolunteer at gmail.com. So today's episode is with podcast host and author of A Sober Girl's Guide, How to Save Your Own Damn Life, Jessica Jabot. You can find her on the interwebs at asobergirlsguide.com. You can find her on the podcast with the same name, and you can actually follow her on Instagram at a sober girl's guide. So we get into her story. um, Her we go over her family of origin, struggles with her father. We talk about her fabulous traveling DJ gig and how she got into recovery. What's really interesting, though, is we get into um, her post that caused a little bit of controversy. A little bit of a shit storm, if you will. Um, she took a stand on abortion, so we had to go there. We talked about it a little bit, and I'll tell you, I'm actually proud of her for um, her courage, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to give her a chance to really provide additional context to her post. So I really enjoyed my conversation with her. She is amazing, and with that, please enjoy this episode with Jessica. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for joining me on the ODAT Chad podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I am too, especially because our little pre-recording chat was so awesome. Um, We have some pretty hot topics in our back pockets. (laughs) Yeah, we got some stuff going on. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to blow it up. I am so excited to talk about this. And it's really, should we just talk about your, well, first here, let's do this. So I wanted to introduce you to my audience, Jessica Jabot. So you're the founder of A Sober Girl's Guide which yeah. is, includes a blog, a podcast, your social media is on point. Uh, your Thank Instagram you. is amazing. And you, you do some coaching, but you're also an author. And you have this book, hmm. Save Your Own Damn Life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Save Your Own Damn Life. That is so um, cool. Yeah. So those are all the stuff that I, I do. Um, I didn't really mean to start doing all this stuff. I never in a million freaking years <laughs> thought I would be a sober girl. I right. was a DJ for over 10 years. Oh my God. So yeah, kind of different. Wow. Um, yeah. Like I was a big club traveling DJ girl. That is not, amazing. Definitely not a sober girl. Um, <laughs> But God damn it, I tried. I tried for over 10 years Wow. Um, to kind of get a grip on sobriety and find the value, actually, of sobriety and what it could do for me, as opposed to, I always kept looking at, you know, being sober as like, oh, I can't do this. I can't drink or, I can't, you know, like, I'm not allowed to, like coming from it, like a Total gross baby. downer. Yeah, like total gross, negative Nancy, uh, little baby point of view. And that's just, that's what I got. Yeah. You know, that's I what I, that's listen. what I got out of life. Yeah. That's, that's, um, the main misconception I think about sobriety is that it's not going to be fun anymore. Yes. You know, we have like this artificial way of quote, having fun while yeah. poisoning our bodies and making horrible decisions and putting ourselves and others in jeopardy. And that's done. Oh. Freaking horrible decisions. Yeah. And I always thought like, oh, it wasn't so bad because like, you know, I like, I didn't go to jail. I didn't get a DUI. I didn't like kill anyone. But meanwhile, like I was 
a mess. <laughs> like when I run into people now, like two years of being like over two years now of being like stone cold sober, like all the way, mm-hmm. um, people are like, oh, like, thank God. I'm like, oh, you couldn't have told me that 10 years ago? Like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny how um, people don't say anything until afterwards, right? Yeah. It's and like a like- horrible relationship. Like, oh, good. I'm so glad you left him. He sucked. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> this whole time? I yeah, mean, like, thanks, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Carol. Not even like a mild, like, I am concerned for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they just wait till it all blows up. Yeah, totally. Oh but I mean, like, you know, cool. Now I made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> now you're on the right path. Yeah, made the right choice. That's sure. awesome. So typically, yeah. um, how I start the podcast is we, and I'm always fascinated by people's, you know, family of origin stories. Cause I feel like that sort of sets the stage, right. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of, you know, childhood trauma that sort of determines how we see ourselves and how we see ourselves as how we live in the world. Right. And, mm-hmm. um, so I thought maybe we could start a little bit with, you know, maybe tell me what you were like as a little girl and where you grew up and a little bit about your family. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I grew up in Vancouver, Canada, I am Canadian, so you might hear some about here about, and there. About, yeah. Yes. Um, so I am the oldest child. I am the only girl. I have two younger brothers. Um, I grew up, my mom and dad are divorced, thank God. Um, oh. My dad was, like, rough. He was very verbally abusive, physically abusive. Oh, really? Like, we literally would refer to him as Hitler. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So I just grew up like just not liking my dad at all. He was so cold and just so mean and I just didn't get it. Like Mm. I just didn't get why he was so mean and angry and it was just all the time. So my mom was the complete opposite. She's like so warm, so loving, so fun, and ended up being like a friend. Uh-huh. Oh. So that's where I was at. Oh, I, I was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, I had this dad who was very mean and very cold. And then I had, on the other hand, my mom who, who was like my friend, you know, like my girlfriend. So not a par- yeah, not a parent. Right. So I, being the oldest, kind of took control. I stepped up and I was like, you know, I would be, everyone would be watching TV and I would be like in the dining room doing my homework, not because anyone told me, but because like I learned how to govern myself at a very young age Wow! because I, I just assumed the rule. I assumed the position. Yeah. Um, Was was your dad an alcoholic or a drinker at all? No. No, he actually, what is his deal? he thought that drinking and drugs were just absolutely horrible. Uh-huh. Like that you were just, that you were like a bum or like a homeless person or just like. Like a degenerate. Yeah, yeah d- a degenerate. If you were involved in like smoking pot or like getting drunk, like it was just. Mm. Yeah, it was like actually kind of funny, but now he is like a total wino, even though he won't admit it. But yeah, <laughs> interesting. So, did you? I'm just so yeah. curious about your dad. Why was he like that? Did you ever find out if he was like abused as a child, or did something happen? Or? I think I think it's because of his dad. Like he basically, I mean, my aunt, and my uncle are the most kind, warm, loving people, and they would say even growing up, like my dad's name is Barry. Um, that they would be afraid of him, even he was growing always up. Always angry. Always very angry, very, very violent. Like you could tell, like if you did like disagreed with him or or just contradicted whatever he would say, he would literally blow up. Wow. It was like a train was coming for you and you could not stop it. All you could do was get off the tracks. Just right. get out of the way. Wow. And he, yeah, he was brutal. I, and even as a, as a kid, like even growing up, my uncle and my aunt told me, I mean, this is also like years later, like we're adults now. So they felt, you know, like 
that I would understand it. Like, you know, having these conversations, I think when we're younger, we don't realize what's going on and we're just like, what, why are you acting like that? Yeah. But, um, yeah, he was just, I think his dad was the same way and his dad Mm -hmm. had a temper as well. And his dad was never there, never around. Oh, okay. So maybe he had some, okay. So he has like learned behavior coupled with maybe some benign neglect. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I would, you know, I think it's just so fascinating. I mean, they say that hurt people hurt people, right? So yeah. I just wonder what makes people so dysfunctional like that? Like why the anger? Like where yeah. is that coming from? So that must have been really difficult for you to grow up with though and the and your mom. So she was uh so was she just trying to manage your dad and protect you guys? Um, I think she was just trying to get through. Yeah. I don't think she really kind of realized what she signed up for. Um, you know, like also the dynamics in their relationship. Like my dad was the the breadwinner. Um what did he do professionally? Oh my god, I don't even know. Like I don't know how to answer this question. I think okay, like I know business he guy. Like, I know he played hockey. And then um professional hockey? Yeah, and then I guess oh, well, that didn't kind of work out. <laughs> yeah. I mean everyone in Canada plays hockey. Oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and then he I remember him and my mom would like flip houses so they would like buy houses restore them and then uh flip them very cool yeah when they were together and then he i think like i want to say like sales like lumber sales or something Uh, like that like construction yeah sales guy yeah something like that okay your mom was a stay-at-home mom no my mom worked at a grocery store she still does it's called save on foods and Mm -hmm. she's been there for like forever. Wow. Um, and then we grew up with nannies. Oh, like babysitters so, and stuff? No, we had like a live-in nanny. A live-in nanny. Oh, that's kind of yeah. hard. Uh, that a cool a, I don't know. Nanny? I don't know. I think like, I know a lot of my friends had it, like really had nannies. Yeah. Oh. It's kind of like what happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That did not, that was not happening at my house. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got an extra room in your house. Just uh, get yeah. a nanny. Put an nanny in there. Yeah. yeah. That seems reasonable. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, so now um okay, so you grew up with this angry dad, so that had to do wonders on your self esteem. And it sounds like it already um um kind of fostered that um like needing to take responsibility at such yeah. a such a young age. Which is interesting because, um, you know, drinking is about a lot of the times losing control, right? It's like the, the opposite. Yeah. Um, how old were you when you started drinking or using? Um, so I would say like high school. I didn't think it was like a huge problem, but like looking back at it, like, yeah, it was weird. Uh, like 17. That seems kind of normal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not normal when you're like downing four liter coolers. <laughs> like we had these like huge, huge four liter like growers. I don't know some like raspberry shit. Oh, it was horrible. Oh my god! But you just like grinned and bared it until you got you know just powered through. You got huh? out, you got out of yourself. Yeah, got out of your body so you could wear that cute little mini skirt. And like I was always getting into nightclubs when I was not of age. Wow. And I would go to nightclubs when I was like in high school on a Thursday and my mom would drive us there. Are you serious? <laughs> you wanted to be the cool mom? I guess so. Or just like didn't want us to walk because we would get there regardless. And like, oh, she didn't feel like, like that's how much power I had over, over your mom, over my situation. Like I was just like, I'm doing this. And if you're not on board, Right. Cool. I will go and I will find someone. I don't need you. Yeah. Yeah. Not scared of mom. Like very independent, like almost scarily independent, like just a little overboard on the independence. Yeah. Realm. So young. Yeah. Yeah. Like so young. And, you know, I was the strong one. I was the independent one. I was the leader. I was, you know, the one in charge. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't sound like you had anybody that you could trust. 
to be in charge so that you could be a kid. Yeah, Yeah. totally. Yeah. There was no such thing. No such thing. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a rough childhood in a lot of ways. Um, okay. So you start drinking, but you are in charge and you're going to the nightclubs and (laughs) (laughs) listen, that sounds like a blast. Um, is that where you kind of fell in love with being a DJ and music and the whole scene? No, no, (laughs) (laughs) like not at all. I was literally just there to get drunk and like make out with my girlfriends. (laughs) (laughs) Make out with your girlfriends? Yeah. Like I was a creep. (laughs) (laughs) I was a creep. I was a full on creep. I didn't even get into like, I mean, I guess I got into like a little bit of DJing when I was like in my early twenties, um, because I went through a bad breakup and I'm like, I got to find some way to kind of get out of Vancouver. Mm-hmm. And so tell I me, went to hair school. I'm sorry. And, tell me about your breakup a little bit. Oh, uh, it was like a pivotal age. Yeah. I was like, again, always lying about my age. I was at a nightclub when I shouldn't have been. And <laughs> I was 18 years old. And I met this girl. I didn't know that there was like lesbian clubs, like or lesbian nights. I thought <laughs> it was just like I had no idea about this lifestyle. I thought uh-huh. it was like a cute little fictional thing that you did, and then you like grew out of it and got a husband. <laughs> you thought it was a phase. <laughs> it's just a phase. Yes. Okay. Everyone said it was just a phase, and everyone described this thing is just a phase. So I'm like, okay, cool. And we even had like lesbian neighbors. And I used to be like, (laughs) okay, like that looks really fun. Like you guys are having a lot of fun together. And like, you have like really cool stuff in your house. And like, this is cool. But when is this going to like, when When is is this going to expire? Yeah. When are you guys going to like go get married to To a boy? Yeah. (laughs) Like, how you know, is when this does gonna... this end? I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Like, when is this vacation over <laughs> for you ladies? So, yeah, I never really understood it. And then um, my friend and I, it's always on Halloween. I always get into a lot of trouble on Halloween. That's because everyone's um, dressed like a skank. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't even need to dress like a skank to be get, get into situations. I just mm. needed to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, my friend and I, we went out to some club in Vancouver and I was 18 years old and turns out that night on Halloween, it was a lesbian night, whatever that is. And we walk in and my friend's like, ew, gross. There's like a lot of girls here. And I'm like, ooh, yeah, there's a lot of girls here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. And so they left. And like my friends left and I stayed and I ended up hooking up with this girl and yada, yada, yada. Two years later, we're wow. like in this full on living together. <gasps> yeah. And I was 18? only like 18 to 20 years old. I That's moved awesome. out. We lived together, had a dog, of course, because every lesbian has to have a dog. Um, so that was your first serious relationship? First, first relationship ever. Wow. Yeah. With a guy or a girl. So that was interesting. And um, (laughs) then. Surprise. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So then she ended up cheating on me with one of our friends. And I literally thought I was going to die. Like I remember my mom coming and like helping me pick up my stuff. I had to move back in with my mom because I was like 20 years old. Right. Uh And my brother was like obsessed with James Blunt at the time. And you know that freaking song? Oh no. Goodbye, my lover. Oh Oh, my God. You just want to slit your wrist, doesn't it? Literally dead. I remember in the back of my mom's car being like, this is it. Goodbye good yeah. day yeah and I I honestly thought like I am never gonna get over this like I trusted this person like completely and fully like what how oh could God. this happen how could this ever happen I never saw it coming didn't see it coming. I had no 
clue. I was completely blindsided and I'm just like, that's it. It's over. Like oh. I am never, ever going to fall in love again. <laughs> that was the first, it sounds like it may have been the first time you ever really trusted anybody. Absolutely. Oh, completely. Man. Like we were like a team. I didn't know what it was like to have someone like on my side. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, it was brutal. However, they are still together and they have like a kid and whatever. So like, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Very big of you. <laughs> yeah. So I guess they really like liked each other. Yeah. Great. Good, good um, for you. Yeah. Kudos. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you're happy in your life. <laughs> As long as you're not better. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, looking at it, like, okay, if I continue that relationship, like, I would have never done, I would have never would have moved to L.A. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was so young. I was such, like, I was a baby. I was 18 years old. Yeah. Like, I must have been a nightmare. I mean, shoot, even at 20, you're a baby, right? Oh, my God. Even at 30, <laughs> I'm, I'm a baby. How old are you now? Are you 30 now? <laughs> I'm 34. Hey, don't say it with Shane Girl. I'm 50. <laughs> You're 50? I am. I just got that. I feel a little bit about shit. that. Yeah, you can, you can, uh, we're doing yeah. this on Zoom so you can see me, but, um. Oh my God, I love it. So we age well. <laughs> oh yeah, you do. But That's thank amazing. you. Yeah. My new best friend. That's amazing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not whatever. It's just like 34 just sounds like an annoying number. It's significant. It's not insignificant. You know what I mean? But uh, I totally see what you're saying though with the, it's almost like, thank God that happened. Cause look where you are now and you love where yeah. you are now. And this is really amazing. Oh my gosh. Totally. Can you just tell me a little bit? I do want to talk about some, your book and some solutions and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. I have to know about your 10 years of DJ experience. That must've been so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It was totally fun. Um, I loved it. I don't, it's, it's funny in hindsight, like, I don't think I loved it as I actually convinced myself oh. into like loving it. Like I loved certain oh, aspects of it. Mm -hmm. um, like I love performing. I love like, you know, being there, being the center of attention, having that control. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm just playing like music, like, I, yeah, I did produce some music, but nothing like great. And I'm like, I'm just playing like someone else's music mm. and like, what, this is it? Like, I don't want to be known for this. Like, right. this is not, I, I, it's an interesting medium. Yes. It's fun. It's cool. It's cool. Um, but that's not what I wanted to be known for. Like, I want to, I want to have a voice. I want people to to know that, I, like, I don't know. I want to like to help people. Yeah, to do something that has a lasting impact and meaning, yeah. and has purpose, and totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's mean, it was fun. fun. It's like a great, like, it was fun while it was fun. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it, like, oh my god, like, I just I, I became like really bitter about it, and I'm like, okay, well. I'm only staying between this time and this time. And if I have to play one more song, I am charging this and this. And like, it was just like, dude, you don't love this. Like, yeah. get out of it. Yeah. You know, if it's, if it's just about the money, run. Like, get the hell out of it. Right. You're never going to be happy if it's just about the money. Right. Yeah. And, so and it was. It became just about the money after a while. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, well, let's get back to the, um, the drinking and part of it. So do you consider yourself an alcoholic or did you have drug issues or can you tell me, walk me through that part? Um, I guess, yeah, I would consider myself an alcoholic. Um, I mean, it's like the new terminology of alcohol use disorder or yeah. substance use disorder, which I think kind of um, has a, a, a broader span 
right? It's yeah. a looser definition that more people can kind of fit under. But there is that idea that it was like, it's fun at first and then that there's problems and yeah. then it's just nothing but problems. Like everything evolves even, you know, yeah. some kind of use disorder. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think I would just say I'm a plain old fashioned like alcoholic. Like, We're drugs I love, I love my wine. Yeah, I loved cocaine. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> yes. Um, but I would never just do cocaine. Like, it was always, like, a double feature. <laughs> double feature. <laughs> uh. So, and you kind of need, like, you kind of need one to even out the other. So, you need, yeah. you know, you can keep on drinking and keep on going. <laughs> they do kind of go it, hand in hand. Yeah, it was, like, a perfect little like marriage, a little combination. Um, you know, you drink and then you have a line and sober up and you keep on drinking. Keep on going. So yeah. when did it, um, when did it become a problem? Um, did something happened, like you didn't, get ar- you didn't get arrested or anything like that. No. When did you decide Were you, did you like get to a place of darkness or sadness where you were like, this is a problem and I have to stop? Um, Honestly, it was all a problem. Hmm. It was all like, you know, I, I was going to, in and out of AA and doing like that 12 step jig for like 10 years. Like since I kind of came to LA, I always felt just very lost and didn't kind of know where I fit in. Um, always kind of trying to be this different person, you know, wearing these different masks, like mm-hmm. being this DJ person. And then like, oh, well, I'm gay too. So like, what does that look like? And then, but I'm DJing. So I need to look like sexy. So people will book me, but I can't look too gay to get like the DJ gig. Like it was like this weird, vicious cycle. It's like, Mm. okay. But then I'm not, then I ended up not being gay enough for the gay people. So I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) Not gay (laughs) enough. Right. Like, like, what is this? Like, what is this racket? Like, I, I just didn't. I don't know. I, I couldn't conform to these labels that I kind of, or characters that I've created for myself. Characters. That's a really per- yeah. that's the perfect way to put that. We play characters. Totally. But, so, but the whole time you couldn't be yourself, but were you even clear about who that was yet? No, no, like not even close. Like yeah. I wouldn't even let myself get close because every time that I would kind of even sit with myself, I would be just so pissed at where I'm at. Like, I would just be oh. so upset. Like, this is not what I want. Like, this is not who I am. Mm-hmm. So I let's agree. just, you know, kind of keep on drinking or keep the party going so we don't have to figure out why. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was in relationships. Like, I did not, I had no business being in, like, at all. Right. Um, uh, I dated very old people, like much older than myself. <laughs> like when I was like 23, I was dating someone who was 50. Oh, 23. Yeah. Wow, score for that person. <laughs> kind of. And a DJ at that. <laughs> but kind of not. Cause, like, did, you ever date, no- did you ever date men? No. No. Okay. Just, Yeah. When I hear people say pronouns, I get confused. I'm like, is that where we wish, you know, is that a man or a woman? Because <laughs> I have oh, friends yeah. who have had, yeah. you know, both. No, I didn't really like date men, just kind of like hung out with them, but I never really like was interested in having a relationship with them. Okay. I'm kind of like, okay, you can go now. <laughs> You're all, ew. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, sir. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Um, Cause I like the challenge and it's like being with a woman is like being with a cat. You never know what the hell is going to happen. <laughs> it's very yeah. unpredictable. Unpredictable. And, and I kind of like that. Shit, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't come easy. <laughs> that is so funny. Um, yeah. So I was like in these relationships with like hoping people would kind of save me. Oh. You know, like being with older people that would kind of like, oh, maybe they can like save me or maybe they can like bring something out in me that I can't bring forth in myself. 
But that doesn't happen because no 50-year-old should really be dating a 23-year-old nutcase. It's just, it is what it is. Regardless of age, like, I was still, a nut, like, wild, like, out of control. When and anyone say- who would be attracted to that yeah. is also wild and out of control in, an, in their own way. I agree. Well, yeah. When did, uh, when did you realize that you were hoping that somebody would save you? Was that like a revelation that you kind of? Yeah. Last week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah. Always learning. Um, yeah, for sure. um, no, I just in the last like couple of years of, of, you know, allowing myself to yeah. do the self examination figure, figure out who I am and Mm-hmm. what I'm doing and why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? That is yeah. the question. That is and why am I attracted about. to this person? Like why, what am I looking for? What do I want? Yeah. yeah. Who am I really? Yeah. Those are all the major questions. I, I, it's so interesting. It's like in the beginning of sobriety, that's when all the questions come out, but I'm so curious um, if I could just backtrack mm-hmm. one second. You said you were in and out of AA for 10 years and you did the steps and stuff like that. Um, was uh, well, kind of did the steps. Mm. Oh, you kind of. <laughs> mm. So, um, listen, I I advocate for AA, but I um, I apply multiple modalities of healing to my life. Yeah, right. Many many different things. Um, AA is how I found recovery, and I still practice it a lot. It's convenient for me. It's part of my community and all that stuff. But. Um, mm-hmm. I'm always interested to hear, you know, why it didn't work out for someone and then what they did instead. Yeah. um, I think why it didn't really work out for me is because I just, I didn't feel good, like, leaving those meetings. Really? Yeah. Did you go to gay, are there, like, the gay AA meetings? Did you try those? Uh, yes. So I went to like mixed meetings. I went to a lot of women's meetings and mm-hmm. I just didn't feel great leaving mm. those meetings. Oh. Um, I always felt like people were there to commiserate, uh, you know, and talk about the past. The Everything was in the past, you know, like, and I'm not that kind of person. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, it happened. But like, what are we doing today? Okay. What are we doing tomorrow? Like, how are we advancing? How are we... Yeah. How are we, um, getting past? Like, tell me something good. Like fucking give me some motivation, dude. Like, yeah. Tell me there is sun. Yeah. There is a sun on the horizon. Like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) let me know. That shit gets depressing. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm just like, and I'm, I'm a very sensitive person and I'm just like, even I can't Mm. even go to like group meditation stuff and like Mm. breathwork classes or freaking get about it. Like, not happening. I cannot meditate in a group. I can't do any of that kind of stuff in a group setting because it just doesn't work for me. Do you, are you um, too concerned about how they're like, you're a caretaker so, or mm-hmm. caregiver. Sorry, not care. I don't know what the difference is any anyway, but um, you're sensitive to the people around you and how they're feeling. Does it distract yeah. from you being able to focus on yourself? Um, yeah. And I can kind of like feel other like, I can people's just feel energy. people like around me yeah and yeah. then like even like like hearing them like breathe and stuff I'm just like nope <laughs> it's too deep <laughs> I mean like happening. my met for me meditations are a very personal thing yeah and um I no I just I can't do it yeah I mean it's a great idea trust me I've tried many times many classes Actually, the only thing I can really do is like sound baths because those are like, are different. And I don't know what that is. What is that? Yeah. A sound what? bath? Tell me what O-M-G. a sound bath is. Gee, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been sober this long. I don't know what a sound bath is. Oh my God. It's amazing. So Ooh. basically, um, I mean, the ones that I go to, there is a guy and he has like, you know, all these crystal bowls and every bowl is attuned to your different chakras so there's like seven oh, bowls okay and then he also uses gongs and like okay. one is um tuned what is it one is tuned to 
north and one to south, like I guess the polar uh-huh. things. Uh-huh. Um, but basically, I kind of describe it as like what it would sound like floating through space. Whoa. So it's like this really, yeah, it's really, really cool. And like, and it's just you and him? It's, no, it's, it's, in a, it's in a group. Oh, it is a group. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like that's the, the only group thing group I can kind of go yeah. to. Yeah. And it's also like live, like these bowls are being played live. And I feel oh. like that is a different kind of like sensation in itself. But like mm-hmm. there's other things and it's very like the sound basically like encapsulates you. Like it's just very moving and it's very powerful. I'm going to have and, to come to LA. They don't have that shit in Idaho. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they, they might. I mean, with all the LA Ooh. people that are. LA people moving out there. Moving out there. Yeah, man. That's very exciting. Like the new LA. The new, new LA. LA. I, I'm it's excited to, to hear that because um, I need some girls mm-hmm. who carry Louis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I think uh, you'll definitely find it. All right. So you, sure. sound bath. I'm totally going to have to check that out so that you leave there yeah. feeling um like with peace and kind of filled yes. up and recharged and motivated like literally just like someone it was like tuning a piano basically like I just felt like all tuned and aligned and just like ready <sighs> to face the world yeah ah oh, I love that or go to sleep or go, oh, go to night. <laughs> yeah. a good nap cures a lot of things <laughs> I'm a huge napper. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. I'm making up for lost time. I think <laughs> I did not nap a lot. Um, okay. So you are in and out of AA. It kind of it must plant some seeds. Where are you with the God thing? Do you have a higher yeah. power? Did you grow up with religion where you are? Where are you? With yeah, God? I didn't, I didn't grow up with religion. Like didn't even set a set foot into a church until I was like mid twenties. Um, but no, I definitely believe in a higher power, like something greater than us. I definitely subscribe to that. Okay. Because there, that's the only other answer to how shit has happened in my life. And can you tell me all the other, um, can you tell me a story about that? Is there something that comes to mind where you're just like, that was God. There's just like, just everything, like any little thing, like they happen daily. Like even, I don't know, like even down to, okay, I was driving last year and my check engine light came on in my car and coincidentally, like I had to go get a smog test. So I'm like, oh, that's annoying. And I literally looked down and I'm like, can you just please go away so I can like get this smog test done and then I can like renew my whatever registration registration shit and like literally I'm like oh god wouldn't that be so good and then literally five minutes later I look down gone (laughs) I fucking drove (laughs) over to a smog place bibbity bobbity boop (laughs) done (laughs) like it's little things like that like what Mm. like how does that even happen you know like yeah okay like that's that come on that's pure magic yeah, that doesn't happen every day, and I think it's like just little things like that. Well, I that, think it's so happen. interesting that you say that because, um, you know, when I grew up in the church and I grew up with ideas like God could part a sea or mm. burning bush or you know some big show, yeah, of God, like I am God, yeah. and um, it's like God. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder why God doesn't do that now. But then I get sober mm. and I sort of align with this spiritual path. I had to throw out the idea of religion, like organized mm. religion, uh, for a while because me and God broke up. But um, okay. But uh, then I get sober and I'm on like on the spiritual path, and then I start to see things like things happen on like a small but really deep personal level. Yeah. You know, and then I'm like, oh, that's God. You know, and for and, and, and for me, like God works through people. So like mm. eight, my sister calls them coinsa gods, like when something like so serendipity happens and yeah, it's like, whoa. It's totally like I'm sort of I subscribe to the God of evidence type of thing. Yeah. So it sounds like that's what you're talking about too. Yeah, totally. I mean it's like and just having you know, gratitude and being able to like appreciate that. 
yeah. like all these little things like cool right yeah. on it's because it's so easy right to just be like oh nothing's going my way like this didn't happen this didn't happen it's like yeah but dude like look at all the stuff that is happening that is happening like chill out yeah gain some perspective here and right. like focus on what is happening do you have a house do you have a roof over your head yeah cool do you have a little bit of money in your bank account cool do you have food in your fridge awesome you right there you're way f- better off than like 98 percent of americans yeah yeah or the world yeah I mean, think about all the think about all the moms in syria who are living on the street with their kids it's like yeah we are so blessed and it, and there's i heard somebody talking about there's like a thousand things that go right during the day like you yeah. can actually get in your car and back out your driveway and mission accomplished. It's like, that's a thing. Like yeah. that went right. Well, the fact that you even have a freaking car. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> With on. registration and a yeah. sound check. Well, Miracles. right now, but, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah. So. Yeah, things are good. Well, tell, so what were the modalities that you use to overcome this, this, this issue with um, drinking? Mm, yeah so I kind of set out and I'm like okay what what do I want my life to look like like how do I want to feel in my life how do I want to move through the world like what kind of impact do I want to have what kind of conversations do I want to have and like and especially like with myself what what kind of conversations and so I kind of boiled it down I was like thinking I'm like okay like what what do I need like at the end of the day what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? Like, what, what is the foundation here? What is the framework for setting me up? And I was just kind of looking at it like for a, a perfect day or a, a good day. Like, what is the framework that I need to build out a good day? And so I started there and I was like, okay, number one, your body. So diet and exercise are a must. They are not a luxury. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, your mind, what are you allowing into your mind? What, like, what are all the outside, you know, situations that you are allowing to affect your headspace? Mm -hmm. And also like, what thoughts are you cultivating? What, what's going on in your mind? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? What's that inner voice saying? You know, so harnessing that your mind. Um, and then number three was connection and first and foremost, connection to yourself. Whoa, that is huge. (laughs) I mean, that right there solves so many issues, so many issues. And it's so hard to connect to yourself because we're so, I mean, especially as women, we're, we're kind of taught to look after everyone else and you know, and don't feel what you feel, be a nice yeah. girl, take care of others. Yeah. What is everyone else thinking, like doing, saying like, no, like screw that. Yeah. What are, th- connect with yourself first. Okay. I think that's, that is your like number one purpose in life yeah. is to figure out shit that you like to do. Yeah. And it's the hardest question to answer. Yeah. Like after all is said and done, all the stuff is checked off your to-do list you know, the kids are in bed, everyone's fed, bills are paid. What do you do for yourself? Mm -hmm. What brings you joy that no one else benefits off of, but what do you enjoy doing for yourself? So I love that. Yeah. So connecting with yourself Mm -hmm. and then that allowing you to connect with others, friends, family, loved ones, and then a connection to a higher power. So knowing that you are not the end all be all, that mm-hmm. this world is bigger than you, <laughs> <laughs> darling. But uh, <laughs> sweet, sweet love. Yeah. So there is something bigger out there, mm-hmm. and that's comforting because it's not all on you. It's not yeah. all about you. Right. Absolutely. You release that, and then the the last one is your productivity. Ah. So how are you expanding? your life? How are you growing? How are you moving forward in your life? How are you being productive? How are you being productive in your relationships? How are you being productive? Um, a lot of that, that, uh, pertains to people in their career money. We need Uh it. 
Uh huh. Straight up, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. We need money. I have no shame around making money. Yeah. Zero. So money is neutral, you know? Money's neutral. It's how we use it that matters. It's energy, really. Yeah, totally. So you, you know, and there's a certain amount of money that you need to have all your, those needs met. And to be um, a value to somebody else. Like money, you can be of service to somebody else with money. Yep. Yeah, totally. So did we just go over your four commitments or is that something else? Yeah, those are my four commitments. That's, Sweet. <laughs> that's it. I mean, this is like, this is no bullshit. Like I lived it, learned it, love it. Like this yeah. is... That's, this is what, ha- what happened. I love this. This is it. I mean, yeah. um, it's not hard. It's well, very simple. I mean, the, it's not like crazy new age stuff. Like I'm not asking you to go out on your balcony and get naked and pray <laughs> to the wolves, you know, like this is very stuff very like cool. they're not, they're not steps. Like this is literally, um, it's a circle, Yeah. you know, like every, every commitment helps the next and vice versa. It's like, I like to say it's like a chair. Okay. All the legs, four legs of a chair. Uh If one of those legs are a little little bit wobbly, it's really annoying to sit on that chair. Yeah. And it's really, you know, it, it's not safe because you're, you know, you're wobbling around. You're like, Oh, is this the day that the the leg's going to break off? That you're out of balance. Yeah. 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 So being sturdy and maintaining those four commitments Okay. Dude leads for a great day and you can go through and check, you know, sometimes I do it by the hour. I'm like, okay, where am I at here? Like, why am I in a a pissy mood right now? Mm -hmm. And I can go through. I'm like, okay, did I exercise today? No. What did I have for breakfast? I had a piece of pizza. Like, come on, (laughs) Jessica. Like, get it it together, woman. Yeah. And you wonder, like, you wonder why you're a little baby? Are you in a little tiff? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of like redirect yourself and yeah. get yourself back on course. Can I tell you why I think this is genius? Um, mm. Is because this is about action. Yes. These are, about, these are actions. And yes. I think so often we want to be judged by our intentions, not our actions, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I uh, kind of fell into the trap of wanting to think my way into right living right? Uh, like I lived at the yeah, self-help yeah. section of Barnes Noble. And I thought if I could read enough books, if I could get the answer, the secret, the seven steps, the, the four, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, the secret yeah. tabs. And there was like some secret or some piece of knowledge that I, that was missing that right. because there is like what you were saying earlier, get perspective, right? So there is some knowledge yes. that's important and you cover that obviously in step two. Um, but what you're talking about are the, it's like we live our way into right thinking. And so just, right. and this is very practical. The other reason yeah. I totally love it, but it's about what actions are you actually taking and, mm-hmm. you know, practicing them um, in a habitual way that will, you know, cause we're always living in the residual of yesterday's choices. So right. all the choices that I made, this is where I'm at today. You know, right. I chose to live in this house. I chose to buy these clothes. That's all. So, um, but I don't know. These are, these are really, these are amazing. And this, this is all yeah. in the book. Uh, save your own damn self. <laughs> yes. Save your own damn life. Save your own so, damn life. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, I, I am a huge fan of action. I think talk, yes. talk is cheap and I did the same yes. thing. I read every goddamn book praying that something would like, Oh, it is magically appear. Like just sage it away. Like, no, <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Like, you know, especially have today, to take like, some action. yeah. Like our emotional intelligence is so, you know, has come so far Yeah. yet people aren't applying it. They're not Apply. putting action, action to the knowledge that we have here. Action and, to the knowledge. Yeah. I have it on my uh, laptop actually. So knowledge isn't power. Action is. Yes. And so, you know, this book, that's why I said, I'm like, this is literally going to be the only self-help. It's literally like, it's a do it yourself self-help book Yeah. because I literally give you the framework, but Uh what makes it unique to everyone is like, you fill in the pieces, Yeah. you know, you're, you're there doing the work and you're answering the questions. 
And that's how it becomes custom and tailored to you because right. you have these actions to do. Yes. It does. And it doesn't matter if you're like, you know, recovering from drugs or alcohol or, you know, Abuse depression or, or yes, cancer any, like, or yeah. Right. You know, any kind of place. That's why I called it save your own damn life. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because we're you the can. Ones, and we're the ones who have to take the action. Yeah. We're the ones who have to make the commitment to do the work. And, um, but uh, you also have a community, which I think is super mm-hmm. important, right? Like it's so important. Like that's one of our basic human needs is we all need community and um, with other like-minded people. So that's, that's it. That's the whole enchilada right there. I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's, listen, I, this is no BS. Like I have lived it. This is the yeah. stuff that works. Mm-hmm. I mean, and at the end of the day, like I kept kind of like, coming back just to these four things i'm like okay Mm -hmm. if like these are all in place i'm good and like i'm beyond good like i'm golden golden yeah 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 with the higher power and the whole thing Mm -hmm. um and now you have dedicated your life i have such a soft spot in my heart for people who dedicate their lives Mm -hmm. to helping others and it's like you have dedicated your 100 percent of your attention to carrying these messages to the world um which I think is super important. So um, I absolutely support you in that. And I love, we started the conversation today about, you know, your Instagram is just on point. I look, you know, when you look (laughs) at it at your phone, you'd see all those squares and it's like all this cohesive theme and it's all bright and shiny. And, um, but we, you were talking about how you decided to take a risk. Was that just yesterday you took a risk? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Girl, let's go there because yeah, uh, yeah, because like I so Brene Brown that you like took a risk and you kind of got your ass kicked. But let's let's talk about it a little bit. So what, <laughs> what did you do? Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, anyone who follows the, the account, your face or, is a little red, by the way. Oh my god, um, it, it's kind of funny. I mean, now yes, that I'm thinking it about is. it, it's kind of funny. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty like bubbly, light, like to keep it upbeat, positive. Yeah never really too serious, even if I'm kind of like discussing some serious issues. Mm-hmm. Um, yesterday was none of the above. <laughs> um, I you just went a little outside to, the box. Yeah, I went a step way outside the box. And I decided to talk about um, my experience with abortion. Because you know what? Because why not? If you're going to go big, go you know, big. why not go big with abortion? Yeah. Because that's yeah. a pretty neutral topic. Right? Not. Nobody's yeah. going to get triggered around that. Yeah. Said no one ever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, you know, the, all these kind of like laws are passing and states are um, making abortion illegal. So scary. And I think that's not a great choice. I think it is not cool to limit women's choices and basically take away their rights and yeah. to you know, put these parameters around a woman's body. Yeah. I I think that's insane. I think that's, I think it's ridiculous. Um, so I basically just did a little vid about my, a little, uh, my experience (laughs) with abortion. And yeah, I, I had one when I was 28 because I was blackout drunk Mm -hmm. and, uh, had a little yada yada. And I was in absolutely no position to take care of myself, let alone someone else. And it was just not an option. And I was very, very grateful that I had that opportunity and I had that option available to me at that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And I think that's what life is all about. Yeah. I made a shitty choice to drink. I was at the peak of my drinking career. Absolutely. I take full responsibility for that. I also take responsibility for my choice to go and get an abortion because I felt that was that was the right choice for me my family and for that you know for what was going to happen so and to not have those choices available I think is really scary it is very scary yeah my mother-in-law was a nurse um for 40 years and um Mm -hmm. we had a discussion and listen I'm not pro-abortion 
I am pro-choice. Mm -hmm. um, I would never, you know, I would encourage somebody to explore the options, but she talked about how girls, women today don't know what it's like to not have that choice. And she mm. grew up in a time where back alley abortions resulted in death. Yes. And um, meanwhile, and there's a little bit of justice. Uh, um, what do they call that? Um, I'm not going to come up with the right word, but it's like this advocate for justice where it's like, where are the men in all this? It's like, mm -hmm. we're going to make abortion illegal. We should make vasectomy mandatory. Totally. If you have an exchange with a woman that ends up in pregnancy and she has to have an abortion, he has, should have to have a vasectomy. Like, yeah. why are we completely ignoring that there are two people involved right. in this, right? Well, it just goes to show, like, we are literally putting the blame on, on the woman. Women. Yeah. 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 I mean, it is an awesome responsibility and now you're gonna, that we like, have to care for, and, but people make mistakes, right. But, right? but two people made the mistake, not just one person. Right. But, like, you're also going to judge me for you know, making a choice. Like, I don't know. I, I just, I wasn't, I, the video wasn't to persuade anyone like this way or that way. I was just sharing my own experience. Uh, most of the comments and reaction I got were actually very sweet. Um, even like a couple of guys reached out and were like, you know what, me and my ex-girlfriend were at the same, at the same, um, uh, same situation and we were you know i wasn't in recovery yet and i was it was a nightmare like i can't even imagine going through and subjecting that person yeah to that right um so and, and like yeah that i mean it's all about choices that's all i can say yeah but you got some negative backlash obviously a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so tell me little, what that was like a little bit um, I won't go like really into it, but, um, I got called a murderer. Ouch. So that was, that was a little painful. bit harsh. Yeah. Super um, painful. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like if you watch the video, I am not trying to convince you or, you know, I don't know, even like justify my actions. I was literally just telling, talking about my experiences mm -hmm. and how um, I was very grateful to be able to have that choice. Yeah. Because I literally would not have the life I was living. Right. Like right, right now I would not like, there's no way like it would just. Yeah. Yeah. Well that, you know, I got to tell it. you that's, that's a, it's a very brave thing to do to take a stand and share your opinion. And the people who love you will double down and love you even more. And the people who are, you know, not going to support you anyway, they tend to go away and it's important to know who your right. people are. So I congratulate you for being brave. Like no matter what your opinion is, you know, to take a stand and what you believe in and be open to um, making sure that you don't have like that, you know, there's this idea of confirmation bias, right? Where you mm. just take a stand on a belief that you haven't really examined, you know, right. we can all look for the evidence to support whatever argument, right? Yeah. So I think it's important to just be open to, you know, be open-minded, right? That's one of the things that we talk about in recovery a lot is being open yeah. to new ideas. So um, I just want to applaud you. Brene Brown is, you oh. know, she does all that um, talk about vulnerability and yeah. hearing greatly and, you know, it's the people who are daring greatly that deserve, the, you know, the credit, not the critics who stand on the sidelines criticizing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And thank you for saying that, because honestly, like all I didn't sleep last night and I was like, you know what, should I just delete it? And like a friend of mine was like, well, yeah, if you want more followers, like you should delete it. And I'm like, I wait. disagree. I think just the opposite. Yeah. I'm like, wait, at the end of the day, like I'm going to delete this because I'm going to get more followers or like, what? Yeah. No, that is not the goal. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not the goal at all. I mean, literally. Yeah. I, I honestly didn't have a goal in hindsight, like putting it out there. I'm just kind of like, I just felt really moved because I saw uh, busy Phillips um, mm -hmm. mention something on her show. And I saw a little video clip. I'm like, oh my God, like, yeah, like we totally need to talk about this. Like, yeah, 
that's like, it's really sad. And she even said like one in four women before the age of 45 will have an abortion. Wow. One in four. Yeah. Wow. And that just before, like before the age of 45 too. Oh, some have it after 45. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's a pretty big statistic. Yeah. And nobody's talking about it. Nope. Yeah. But we are. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important that people, and listen, you know, I don't, even if the people who come from like that religious standpoint, you know, it's like, right sins are to be forgiven, you know, let's not, and listen, we don't know, listen, we, we don't know how God, I feel like God can make anything right. Like any, yeah. anything that I perceive as a painful um, situation that happens, I hate to call them a mistake. I feel like there are no mistakes they are only lessons, mm-hmm. right? And we learn, you know, lessons are repeated until they're learned type of thing. And um, but something valuable comes out. And if it happened, you know, God either is or he isn't. And so he can make whatever situation, something positive, he can turn anything into a positive. So yeah. Um, there you have it. There's my soapbox for the day. <laughs> <laughs> right but, on. Um, I really appreciate your willingness to talk about that. You know, we, when I reached yeah. out to you, you're like, I'm an open book and, and here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Sharing it all. Yes. So um where no can secrets. people I, I am I'm excited about your book. Um where can Thanks. people find your book? Um so it's just getting wrapped up right now. Oh um it's out. not it's not out yet. Um but it will be out on Amazon. Okay. That is, uh where it will be, and I will have that on the website. I'm sure you will see it on social media. It's like I mean it's going to be Do you have like a date? Next, do you have a launch date? Nope. <laughs> okay, well. I probably should, to, to, should get into that. Um, um, do you have a pre-order thing on your website or just directing people to your website so they can sign up no. for your email or something? Honestly, you're the first person I'm even talking oh. <laughs> to about it because okay. like, like it's done. Okay. I just haven't like pulled the trigger on a launch date and like, yeah. Well, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for a couple little things to fall into place. Um, there also will be, uh, an online course to go with the book too, which is insane. Like it is so good. (laughs) It is so good. And I'm so excited about it. Um, yeah, like the book is so freaking funny. Like I was just reading a little bit about like I was reading my own book last night. I was okay. reading my own book. It's hilarious. <laughs> it was so fun. And I'm like, this is so true. I'm like, this girl is smart. And I'm like, it's yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's it. funny. Like, it's just, yeah, I'm just a total goof. Um, but no, I'm really excited. And I'm just kind of like waiting for a couple little okay. pieces. Just to get like, organized. That's- yeah, you just, you get just- in there. You just let me know when, um, when yes. that's happening. We'll definitely share right. that. I'll put it in the newsletter and everything. And, and uh, Thank I, you. Yeah, I'll encourage you to get like a, um, you know, like a newsletter, get like an email. People can like, you know, put their emails into a list or something like a pre-order list or something like that. That would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I, yeah. I like, I mean, like I said, I just want to, yeah wait for these little T's to be crossed yes. and um, then yeah, watch out. Be careful what you wish for. It's coming, <laughs> Listen, it's coming I'm in hot, baby. To support <laughs> you. So oh, you just you. let me know and um, it's very we sweet. Like a, maybe we can do like a little webinar or something and Ooh. Uh, go over your course. Go over okay. The, yeah. We'll do a little, little course launch or something. That'll be awesome. Cool. Yeah. I'm down down for whatever. Well, listen, uh, you've been very generous with your time. Um, please tell uh, my listeners uh, where they can find you because you do some coaching stuff too. So I think yeah. that's important to mention. Oh my God. I love coaching. Coaching is yeah. like, oh, yeah. it's so fun. Um, so first and foremost, I mean, definitely check out the website, a sober girls uh-huh. uh, We have a really great blog, which is like fully stocked on all the, the like how to's, you know, recovery stories, 
and everything in between like celebrity recovery stuff, like literally everything. The blog is really fun. Um, the podcast is available on iTunes and Spotify. It's a sober girl's guide. Everything is the same name. I like to yeah. be consistent. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Simple, <laughs> easy to remember. Yes. Uh, the podcast is really fun. Have some really interesting guests, very colorful. Yes. I saw your list. It's so good. Yes. Um, and then um, what else? Yeah. Co- so if you're interested in coaching, it's on the website as well. We also have like an event page. So if you're looking for sober or non non wait, alcohol free. There we go. There you Events. Go. <laughs> uh, there's tons of information up there. I mean, I just want to like provide everyone with the, the all the resources and as mm-hmm. much information as possible. Awesome. There's free downloads. There's like literally every little nugget you can get your hands on. All kinds of goodies. Okay. I will mm-hmm. definitely leave uh, links to all of that in the show notes. Uh, cool. But Jessica, I, gosh, I'm so grateful that you had the time to meet with me today yeah. and I so enjoyed our conversation. Me so, too. Um, yeah. Thank I you. To supporting you in your future endeavors. Let me know how I can help and we'll have you back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, girl. You have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. You too. One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed the podcast today, please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher and leave a review. And if you'd like to make a donation to the podcast and help me keep the lights on, you can do so by visiting odatchat.com. There's a donation button or membership button on the right hand side. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us.